one of the things that we're going to be able to do really, really soon is we're going to be able to just sit in front of a computer, give it a command, and then watch the computer execute that command on its own without our inclusion in that process. And the very first project that seems to do this to a pretty good extent, I'm going to show you in this video two cases, one where it does it really well and one where it's not that good at doing it, is the self-operating computer. So this is a relatively new project. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you the entire process of getting it set up and then I'm going to test it. And like I said, I'm going to show you two cases where it does something really, really good. And in another case, it doesn't do it as, as good as you might expect it to be able to do it. And so there are some situations where this is applicable. There's a lot of situations where it's also not. And we're just going to be exploring that in this particular video. If you enjoy AI content like this and a lot of educational content, be sure to hit that sub button just so we can reach our goal by the end of this year. Let's go ahead and get started with this project. So if you do want to follow along and use this project on your own machine, what you want to do is you want to start by creating a new empty folder on your computer. Then we'll get that folder opened up inside of the command prompt. Now we're going to use git to go ahead and clone the repository. And to do that, you can click the repository link in the description and just head over here and just go ahead and copy the HTTPS clone link here. And using git clone, we'll go ahead and clone this repository. And you just need to add a space over here and add a period just so git will clone it in that exact folder. It's a fairly small repository. So for me, it's already done cloning. And then we want to go ahead and create a new conda environment to run this in. So this is a three step process. To begin with, you just want to run conda create dash n and then give it a name for your custom conda environment. In my case, I'm calling it self op. And then you just want to run that command and give conda a moment to go ahead and process that. Once conda is done creating that environment, you just want to go ahead and copy this conda activate command, paste it at the end of your command line and press enter to activate your conda environment. And with that out of the way, we just want to run the command pip install dash r and pass in the requirements.txt file and give that a moment to run and just install all the needed packages. This requirements.txt file is just contained inside of the folder that we just cloned and it just has all the packages that we need to actually start installing this self-operating computer. Now with all the requirements already installed, what we want to do is we just want to run pip install dash period and press enter and this will go ahead and actually start to install the self-operating computer on your local machine. Now if you're on a Mac, you might need to go and give your terminal access to certain settings within your computer because Mac is a little bit more restricted than Windows, but that should be fairly straightforward and it should be something that you can do inside of your system settings. And now because the self-operating computer uses GPT-4 and GPT Vision to work, we need to actually create and save our open AI API key. And to do that, we just want to start by heading over to the folder that we just cloned, right clicking on this .example.env file and just renaming it to simply .env. And then you just want to open that file inside of any notepad. And in here, you just want to paste your open AI API key. So I've gone ahead and pasted mine in here and you'll need to head over to open AI to go ahead and create and also copy your key. And you just want to paste it in here exactly like this. Once you're done with that, we're just about ready to go. You just want to go ahead and open up your command line again. I'll go ahead and clear my screen for this particular part. And to kick things off, you just want to run the operate command. So I'll give that a run. And once you see the screen, it just means you're successful in starting the self operating computer. And I just want to go ahead and click OK. And just like that, it's asking me to give it an instruction for it to go ahead and execute. Now, like I said, I'll test it with two separate commands, one that it's really good at and another that it's not. And one task that I've noticed it's particularly good at is just playing any YouTube video. So that's exactly what I've said. I've just told it play a YouTube video and I'll go ahead and press enter. Now, this does seem like a particularly easy task, but as you'll see, it does have quite a few steps and it does take quite a few steps for this AI to be able to run this particular task on my machine. Now it's just opened up the taskbar and it's typed in Google Chrome and the Google Chrome window has opened up. So let's just see. It's trying to find the search bar inside of Google Chrome. I think it's already selected the search. So you should just be able to type in youtube.com and head there. And there it is. It's typing in youtube.com. The YouTube page should be able to open up in a minute. And then it should be able to select any random video on this particular screen. And there you go. So it has successfully started a video playing on my screen and it should be able to confirm just about now that the video is already playing. I see it's trying to pause it as well. Not to show why it's doing that, but I've gone ahead and minimize Google Chrome and you can see here inside of the console, it keeps a log of every single step that it's taking. And it does say at the end here that the objective was complete. So it could tell that it opened up YouTube. All the instructions that it took are right over here. And then it goes ahead and just lists a summary of what it's done. So, so this is an example of a task that it does really, really. Well. Let's take a look at an example of a task that it's really not that good at. Now, this next task is a task to write a post on my Twitter saying, hi, everyone. So I know it's really not that good at this task. So I'm not too worried about it sending out a tweet to anybody. I'll go ahead and press 
press enter for it to start trying to execute the command and so once again it's taking a screenshot of my screen just trying to keep track of everything and it should be able to open up google chrome really soon there it goes typing in google chrome google chrome opens up and google chrome is slightly to the side on my machine i'll just move it back in the middle here just so it has a better chance of being able to do this stuff and it should detect in a short while that it needs to actually type twitter inside of my search bar and there you go you can already see it's starting to mess up it tried to select my search bar but then it just actually clicked out of it uh despite the fact that the search bar was already selected these are the issues that you get with these sorts of models because it's using chat gpt vision and it's receiving coordinates from it and then trying to select that stuff on your machine when it makes a mistake it just can't take that mistake back because that mistake has already happened in your particular machine but let's just see how it tries to handle this and what i've done is i've just gone ahead and headed back to my command line and you can already see that it's trying to type twitter.com but the search bar is not yet selected now it is still running so i'll go ahead and give it somewhat so that it tries to solve this problem and after a few minutes of just idling around and trying to click in so many locations you can see here it just kept trying to click in so many areas on my screen it eventually just gives up and just says well twitter.com is not a recognized or operable program so that's an example of a task that it's actually not that good at in this case it couldn't even visit a website it has been able to visit youtube in the past and it should have been able to visit twitter but then in the past when it actually got to twitter it, it wasn't able to select the posting section to be able to post the tweet so these are some problems that it has at the moment but i do see a lot of potential in this particular project and i'll obviously keep you guys up to date on exactly what happens with it in the future now on saturday i'm gonna be recording an in-depth video on how this technology works so i definitely like to have you guys available for my live stream on saturday so make sure you guys subscribe to this channel so that you receive notifications when i start that live stream i will catch you guys in the next video and peace out